So listen, um, I, I've said it a million times, but I, I love the show. I'm really happy to get to talk to you guys about it. Uh, congrats on a great first season. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. But I'm late, uh, but I'm late, it? <laughs> uh, by the way, I, I also enjoy the Four Seasons backdrop. Right. Okay. Okay. Well done, Juan. Oh, okay. He knows it. He knows it. He's been here before. Uh, one, once or twice. So listen, you guys, I, and I think fans were unified in, in one thing on this series, which is you guys were fantastic together. Um, that is one thing I'm sure of. And uh, can you sort of talk a little bit about um, finding that bond? Did you, was there anything, did you guys talk before you arrived on set the first time? Or is this just actors being really good? Uh, well, I, don't know. I mean, you couldn't shut us up. This is the thing. But the first time we met, it was it was coming out of a lift. Sophia was coming out of a lift with Cor- with her daughter in her arms, and uh, we um, and we just hit it off straight away. I think, yeah. and we had loads of cups of teas and talked on the balcony, kind of casually chatted about how our relationship together, um, Disa and and Durin's relationship, but and it kind of. We had time on our hands out in New Zealand as well, mm-hmm. so we got to we really got to build on that. And I think the key ingredient was that we were just at ease with each other and happy and you know naughty and all of those kind of secret ingredients that 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 form a good relationship. I think. Yeah, I, I second that, and I think I think um, safety is a really big key word for us as well. Like, um, I feel like. A wine makes me feel really safe and I hope I do the same. And so the minute that you have that kind of safety and trust in a relationship off screen, what that means is when you get onto a stage, suddenly you are at complete ease and freedom to take things to distances that you may be, you know, wary of if you didn't kind of have that kind of tight, tight knit, safe feeling. So mm. I think we just felt like we were on the same page. We, 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 yeah, well, and we pushed each other. We challenged each other. We discussed things. We yeah. had little... We succeeded and we failed together. Yeah, we did. We kind great. of went through it all. And did we have some challenging times? Absolutely. And came out way strong. We got to know each other more from them um, and looked after each other and looked after the characters and, and I think saw their journey in the same light, which was... Um, which was really helpful, but we had a lot of fun. We're quite loud, really well. quite silly, and uh, we just had a really, really, we had a good time. Yeah, I'm one of the things about this series is that you, you know you're part of an ensemble cast, so I'm curious, what is it like making a show where they might say to you, "Okay, we need you Monday and Tuesday, and then you have two weeks off." Oh, I love it! I think it's delightful. I think I have to say, like, it's kind of bittersweet in both realms. So. It's kind of nice to be able to dip in, go out, because you can feel when you come back, there's this new kind of vivacious excitement and what are we doing next? And we're all chomping at the bit to restart. However, there is also something in the consistency of keeping going. Like um, fairly recently, we had like quite a long stint of filming mm. and um, we were kind of going at it for a, for quite a long time. And that That's was nice. really tough. T- Thing. But I think really helpful because you stay in the zone. You kind of like, you don't have to remind yourself, where did we pick up where we left off? Where were we going? Where were our hearts? Where were our feelings? Where were our, even the voice, down to the voice and the accent. Was I pitching her lower? Was I doing that? <laughs> um, so um, I think, um, yeah, there's kind of pros and cons on, on, on both sides. But I think, yeah, I feel like now we're home, it's nice to kind of like get home and be home for a little bit. But I think when we were in New Zealand, we were like... <laughs> We just want to work. We want to. We want to. We want to do this. Yeah, and I, I, being in New Zealand for the first season, I think, was a key ingredient to us bonding. bonding. Yeah, everyone. You know, even though I may not see, I'm definitely not going to see every single character in this show. No, it's character. So, <clears throat> but we were able to to bond uh, an, an ensemble, a, a team, a group of actors, a group, a group of players. Um, if you like that, that we that again was state. We had each other's backs. We met up every Sunday in Ben Walker's house, and you know we 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 just looked after each other and and became an ensemble. I certainly felt like I was I was in an ensemble when I was out there, and you come back and you hear about their various experiences on 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 set and stuff, and you you're living it with each other. 
um, which is kind of quite poetic in, in, in what what our characters are going through in Middle Earth as well. Mm. I think so. It's quite it's, it's quite nice, very nice. When you got the roles, or maybe even after you got the roles, how much did you feel an obligation to like learn everything you could learn about Lord of the Rings? knowing you're going to run into fans that might ask questions and how much are you sort of like, I, I just know what I know, you know, like what I'm going to get out of the scripts. Well, ultimately that's, that, that's, that gives you a sense of ownership over it. Um, if you go, this is what I know, this is what I'm bringing. You can go down that route, but it's hard to avoid all these little um, bits that you can get from the text. And also what I think is, is that, Everybody interprets the text differently as well. Okay, there are some given circumstances that you have that you can't avoid, but there is there is um, there is room for interpretation in Tolkien's in Tolkien's world, and he because he himself contradicts himself in in some parts of the text as well. So there's no real answer to every question. But what's wonderful is that people have a sense of ownership over it and claim it for for themselves and i think that's I, th I think that's great and as long as you approach everything with an uh, an open mind as much of an open mind as you had when you read the text then then i think you, you know you, you'll, you'll get more out of it again is there anything you want to add yeah i think um my personal approach was um my personal approach in the beginning was i know what i know at this point i know what i know but that's my approach with every single project that I've ever done in my entire career. That is my approach. At this moment, I know what I know. And so when I started to learn about, when I started to learn about who it was I was playing, what I was doing, who have I got next to me, what are the surroundings, then suddenly I start to control the level of kind of research and the distances that I go. And I kept leaning back to Tolkien, obviously. Um, Tolkien is all around us. You know, he was all around us every minute, of every single day. There isn't a speck of dust on the floor or a stitch in our costume that didn't come from the infrastructure or some kind of inspiration from Tolkien's appendices. There is no doubt in my mind about that because of the strength of our crew and our creative team. And so you are immersed in the research wherever you came from. And that's what's so lovely is there's such a vast cast of us, but all of us have come from different backgrounds and different experiences with Tolkien and, 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 and all of the stories. And so it was this medley of different ideas and different kind of experiences all coming together and saying, right, what have we got to bring to the table? Some people had extensive knowledge of the Legendarian. Some people had not much, but they had extensive knowledge of creativity and how to pull words off of pages. And we all kind of muddled together, cast, crew, creative team, production, everybody, and, um, and made this thing happen. But now that everyone's seen the costumes, how much have you been pitching them on season two to be like, just let me go to Starbucks in this thing. I know people are going to enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wish it was um, comfortable enough to be to able to do that. But at the, at the end of the day, at the actual end of the actual working day, you just want to rip it all off and kind of <laughs> just breathe again. You know, it's... it's um, it's quite, um, it, it's it's an experience. It's I've never experienced it for on set. This kind of survival mode that you have to go to. It's definitely a, a new discipline that I've had to pick up quick um, to be wearing the costume, to be wearing the the, the beard, the wig, the the prosthetics, and uh, and and trying to, to to work with that, but. Um, yeah, I mean, there's 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 loads of coffee on set, so we don't need to go to other coffee shops. <laughs> I think it was just for me, it's like on you know, for example, Halloween, you know, being able to like you know, but I didn't think about the fact that yeah, it must be miserable wearing that all day. You know, I think it's the one thing I'm saying is it's really transformative. I'll never forget that we did a ton of movement, which was really helpful, like kind of like movement. Um, how do the dwarfs move? How do they greet each other? How do they bond? How do they walk? How do they, if they're frustrated, what does that, how do they turn their heads? You know, if they're to look at something, we wanted it to be beyond that kind of human just to turn a head. Like, what does that look like with everything that they're carrying in terms of 
their pride, you know, their inner carrying and their outer carrying. And and I think, um, so I found, I think the costume, I can speak for us both, that man, it grounded us. Like the weight of that costume mm. is about as dwarven as it gets, right? You know, you're going to sit really low. You're going to walk really tough. You're going to beat your feet. And every time you turn, you do feel like you're turning with a 10 ton weight behind you. And, and, and so that was really exciting because... It, it it needed no more. You were immediately transformed. But yes, taking removing that at the end of the day, my goodness, you felt yeah. like you could like because you felt like you were walking around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the creatures of the Lord of the Rings, and I just want to know what was your reaction when you saw in the script, and then a Balrog appears. <laughs> well, I, I, I just. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, well, that's going to cut our story short. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. You know, exciting, obviously, because you know it's the Balrog that that we all know, and you know we can hear Gandalf screaming that line. Yeah, I know he said it incorrectly, but you know we can we can still hear him <laughs> saying it. Um, um, but yeah, exciting. It's it's one of those again. It's one of it's one of those moments where you go, oh my life, I'm in Lord of the Rings. And I, you know, we we get, you know, we get to live quite close to them, so it's kind of like another thing, another tick, I suppose. Of I was really there. excited for the fans as well. I have to say, I knew by this point how excited they would be. I, I, I um, my brothers actually are huge fans of huge, huge fans. In fact, they've been like my guardian angels on my shoulder with so much. And um, I just knew when I saw it, I was like, yes, I'm hoping that people are going to be really excited about this. This is um. Yeah, this would be a great thing for our amazing, amazing Die Hard fans. So, yeah, it's exciting. On that note, I got to go. I'm just going to say congrats on a great season, and I'm looking forward to season two. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Emily. Thank you.